Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, the Bits You channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. As a small content creator on YouTube, I have never really bought into the idea that the YouTube algorithm is particularly picking on me. YouTube is its own sort of form of media now. It has come to be distinguished from things like film and TV by rules like never make your videos longer than 12 minutes and if you have to, no longer than 20 because you will lose your audience. That's just a rule that I've discovered by doing this. And I don't think that it's particularly picking on me. YouTube, um, you know, if you want to be successful here, it is possible but don't give up your day job. Now, this is some things that I have kind of thought about and walking into it and doing myself. If you want, if you walk into YouTube and you want to be successful, if you expect to be successful, success is like everything else in every other creative media. Success is highly unlikely. <laughs> if you want to be, have a good shot at it, you need five things. You need to be charismatic, young, attractive, female, and a gamer. If you've got all five, you stand a better chance of being successful on YouTube, but don't quit your day job. If you have some combination of those, you also stand a better chance, but don't quit your day job. The one thing that you really absolutely have to have is charisma. You cannot learn charisma. It cannot be taught. You either have it or you don't. And if you don't, definitely don't give up your day job. Now, celebrities, they have charisma. It's part of why they're celebrities. They have a personal magnetism that makes you want to watch them. And contrast any celebrity to me. I do not have charisma. If I did, I'd have five million subs and every video would get a million views. I also have none of the other attributes that you need to at least have a chance on YouTube. Young, attractive, female, gamer? Nope, none of those. But I didn't come into YouTube expecting to be successful. This show has had two formats, science fiction movie and TV reviews and political commentary. I did the science fiction side for almost two years and it was a complete bust, uh, probably worse than I'd even imagined. And then YouTube deleted the channel for unspecified community guidelines reasons and I still have no idea why. Uh, the videos certainly seemed pretty non-threatening to me. But I came back from that deletion and, by the way, don't tell YouTube that I did that. And when I did, it was becoming clear that the review format just was never going to be there. Um, that space, like almost everything else on YouTube, belongs to the young. Very few people want to watch what an old, white, het gendered male has to say about Star Trek, Star Wars, or superheroes. So I switched to political commentary earlier this year, in January 2019, and I've been releasing commentary videos at least once per week. Now the jury is out as to whether this is going to be more successful because unless you have something go viral, the odds of which are about the same as winning the freaking Powerball, you need to give it a couple of years. And even after that, I might still do it just for the historical record so that the people would know in future generations that during a time of complete political upheaval, there was at least one adult in the room. And for future generations, hi, watching in the future, I have, I wish people had paid more attention to me. I'm sorry that they didn't, but there really was only so much that one man could do. So with those goals and, uh, you know, expectations in mind, Again, as a small YouTube content creator, I have never bought into the idea that the algorithm was particularly picking on me. And then I saw my BitChute account. Let me show you something really interesting. What you're seeing here is one of the control panels that YouTube has to uh, mo monitor and uh, deal with your videos. Uh, as you can see here, I just want you to um, look like, look at this one video. Where are the aliens, which is my most recent video upload, and I want you to notice over here that it has 13 subscriptions, or, or uh, 13 views, rather, 13 views, and I have 75 subscri subscribers. Now look at the exact same video on BitChute. Where are the aliens? And right here we have 58 views two to three times what it is on YouTube. And if you look at all of my videos, you'll see the same thing happening. Uh, this is an, uh, uh, the Zero Aggression Principle live stream that I uh, certainly suggest you watch. It's having trouble being uploaded there, but, but I'll get it figured out. But if you look at them all, they all have far more views. And if you look at over here on this sidebar that shows you know, the most, re most watched, I have hundreds of views in some cases, hundreds. And that's with only 34 subscriptions. Clearly, um, you know, 
All my videos on BitChute have more views. Some, several of them, like I say, have several hundred, which might not sound like much, but I have never had that many views on YouTube. I broke a ceiling for myself with the uh, AOC Discovers the Garbage Disposal video, but that was simply because I happened to be on top of it one morning when that footage became available on um, Instagram. I pulled it down and put it up on my own channel before too many people had uh, otherwise had it, so I was, I was in on the early part of that news cycle. But that was just because it was that video. Um, my regular content rarely, if ever, ever exceeds double digits. So, for myself, I smell something fishy going on here. Uh, I think the difference, really, is it revolves around YouTube's algorithms versus uh, BitChute's. And to understand that is going to take a moment. I'm going to have to have, let you sit back and give a brief tour of an important IT concept, kind of like I would have done when I was play, teaching at the place that shall not be named. So here we have a little bit of a tour. Now I spent IT, I spent 40 years there, and the term algorithm is integral to that whole industry. Really briefly, what an algorithm is, is a series of steps that you take in order to perform a given activity or to make a given decision. So let me show you something, a simple flow chart here. This is a nice simple flow chart. It's a diagram that's used with standardized shapes to represent various actions inside of the algorithm. This flow chart represents the steps that are required to ask a computer user for five numbers, add those numbers up, and then print the result. And this is a very small flow chart. It's representing a very simple process. Anybody with some computer um, coding skills would be able to write the program to do this. I could do this in five minutes in C and a couple of other languages. The um, more complex the process, the more complex the decision making or activity process is, the more complicated your algorithm becomes. Let me show you a complex flow chart. This is a fairly complex flow chart. I have no idea what it's doing. If I sat down with it for a couple of days, I might be able to figure it out. It is just barely small enough that if I knew what it was supposed to do in the first place, I might be able to come to an understanding of it. But it is almost beyond the ability of a single human being to understand that entire algorithm. Now, YouTube uses something that we call algorithms. And we do it almost in hushed tones and religious undertones, and it's very weird. But YouTube, its algorithms are, as I described, but they are far far, far larger and more complex. YouTube's algorithms decide many things. For example, right when you upload it, it will check and see if it violates, obviously violates rules against sex, drugs, violence, etc. Uh, it'll check if the video contains copyrighted material, which it gets wrong a lot of the time. Uh, it checks if the video can be monetized, even if the, uh, video, you, the uh, YouTube channel is uh, eligible for monetization. It can check and see if the video is not a, a, able to be monetized, and it checks to see if a video should be suggested to a user or shown in a user's sidebar, things like that. Now, in fact, YouTube probably has multiple algorithms designed to work together, each of which are far more complex than that complex flowchart I just showed you. YouTube's overall algorithm, again, is hundreds of times more complex than what I just showed you. So. Lately, what's been happening to my favorite YouTubers is they've been becoming vic victims of the new YouTube algorithm. And this has certainly been the case since the Vox Adpocalypse. They're chasing their videos taken down, the channels deleted. Um, and it recently has caused some of them, even the ones that are not being directly hit, to be demonetized in the background. They will find that while their channel is eligible for my monetization, their videos are instantly made ineligible by the algorithm. And the moment they upload it, it doesn't matter what the video is, it could be two seconds long when they upload it, it's automatically set to be not monetizable. We have, uh, if, um, you can also do things like uh, flag videos for inappropriate content, uh, gets a lot of false positives there as well. 
It can also have copyright strikes made against your videos, um, even though the videos have no copyrighted material. This one happens to be my favorite, as I have this done to me on several videos. My most recent one was the 2019 State of the Union Just the Speech video, in which I edited out all of the audience reaction to the 29th State of the Union address, 2019 State of the Union address, and it's just the speech. If you want to watch that, link below. I certainly suggest you watch it. But when I uploaded it, I got a copyright strike on a State of the Union address, something that's clearly public domain. Um, and I put it up for review, and in a couple of months, YouTube took notice and decided, yes, it was not copyrighted and gave it back to me. But that was a couple of months, and that was on a good way, a good day, I mean. Unfortunately, unless you're already making YouTube money, meaning that you're eligible for monetization, with them, which I'm not, it's just about damn near impossible to get a manual review from YouTube to change something that the algorithm found objectionable, such as a copyright strike, when no content is copyrighted. Now, I have generally stopped even trying. If I ever get enough subs on YouTube and uh, watch all my videos, uh, to be eligible for monetization, I will probably ask for reviews on the videos that have been copyright striked against them. But I'm not holding my breath. Now, let me bring it back to this flowchart just a little bit. <clears throat> no one is in control of the entire YouTube algorithm. That is, no single individual understands what's going on in an algorithm like this, or worse, because there are much greater and a bigger family of algorithms on YouTube. Pardon me, I record this all in one take, and my uh, seat is old. <laughs> but anyway, nobody understands this algorithm, or anyone even remotely like it. You know, most people understand only a little piece of it. And they certainly don't understand the family of algorithms that YouTube in uses in order to make its decisions. Now, a company like YouTube is going to be made up if hundred, of hundreds, if not thousands, of individual programmers. And any given one or two might thoroughly understand a part of this algorithm because they spend all their time maintaining it. That is, that they make changes dictated by superiors, they fix bugs when they're found, things like that. But they don't really understand the entire algorithm. No single individual can. You can only have a general idea, but it's too complex for a single individual. Indeed, it may well be that to some extent the algorithm itself is in control of itself. Some kind of AI, or maybe even an outright AI at this point, I don't know. But no one, no human being, is really in control of the algorithm because no one understands it. Sorry. Now, believe it or not, algorithms like this have a personality to them. I'm not trying to anthropomorphize something. I'm saying that it has a personality. They tend to make decisions based on the way that their programmers make decisions. And this is because when you're doing something complex, there's really no one single right way to, or wrong way to do something. For any complex series of steps, one programmer might think of one way to do it, and another one might think of a totally different way, and both could be perfectly right. Um, there's, you know, there's no one right way to do this. So the way that programmers make their own decisions is the way that the algorithms are going to be skewed towards making decisions. So again, it will tend to take on a personality that is that of the individual programmers making up how it is written and how they make decisions. Now this becomes extremely evident when you're making decisions about video content that has a political component such as mine because the algorithm will make decisions about content based on the designers and or programmers decisions and how they do things. So consequently again the, the algorithm tends to take on the personality of its designer. Now imagine that we have a large group of programmers who are communists and socialists. And because there's no one right way to do something, the algorithm makes decisions based on how programmers make decisions, meaning the algorithm will make socialist and communist decisions. However, programmers, they don't generally think of themselves as biased um, because for the major tech companies, and it's certainly not true, by the way, in the Midwest, if you want to get away from that, come build your business in Lincoln, Nebraska, Omaha, Nebraska, Des Moines, Iowa, Sioux, City, uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, uh, anywhere in the Midwest, you will not find the programmers being a communist and socialist the way that they are in Silicon Valley. And they don't recognize it in themselves because they live in these little bubbles of socialist and communist thought in Silicon Valley. 
Amazingly, they made their fortunes based on the free market, and yet they believe in communism and socialism. So the algorithm used by Google, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and the bigger tech companies makes socialist and communist decisions. The owners of these platforms claim that the algorithms do not discriminate against non-socialists, even though it's patently obvious that it does, because they see themselves this, they, as not biased. They have just allowed these biases to become part of the algorithm because it's part of who they and the programmers are. And now, no human being controls the algorithm that is now currently making socialist and communist decisions. Now, because of the scope of the large tech companies, Google, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, etc., our society has started to be ruled by algorithms that are created by people who lean towards socialism and communism, even though they think they don't, and who do not control the entire algorithm, and they at best only understand parts of it with no understanding of the rest of the algorithm. It is clear that the algorithms are making socialist and communist choices and that it has the effect of attempting to mold society away from a free market and to socialism. And this would be very, very bad, okay? Because socialism and communism always fail, killing millions in the process. Just look at the history of the 20th century. Look at Venezuela. So in my video, Fighting the Technocracy, there's a link to it below, I said that as a libertarian, I believe that any business has the right to refuse me service for any reason, even if it's because they don't like my politics, because to do otherwise is to g allow the government's camel's nose into that tent, and it will not end until they completely control who you can and cannot associate with. Whenever government has dictated who you can associate with, it is a direct step toward tyranny. The way to fight the technocracy is the market responding to things like YouTube's socialist algorithms. Now, I have said in previous videos that the moment there's enough eyes on another service, I'm there, dude. I'm, I'm out of YouTube. Well, for me, the tipping point has clearly been reached. Whatever BitChute's algorithms do, they are doing better for my videos, far better than YouTube. Now, I suspect, I don't know, but I suspect that small creators like myself aren't shown in YouTube sidebars, nor do we show up as suggested videos, for the simple reason that there's, we're not eligible for monetization, so there's really no reason to push us. Now, I may personally have some bit more difficulty because YouTube's socialist algorithms are finding what I talk about to be offensive. Um, I don't know necessarily that that's true. I generally think largely it's just because there's no money to be had for YouTube in and with me. But in any case, BitChute's algorithm is doing a much better job for me. More, more people are seeing my videos, even though the majority aren't subscribers. So because of my large audience on YouTube, or BitChute rather, this channel is no longer primarily a YouTube channel. Tales from SYL Ranch is a BitChute channel. From now on, my videos will be posted first to BitChute, and then I will market and promote the BitChute uh, URLs on social media. And after all of my usual marketing is done on the BitChute side, I will then release the video on YouTube. I'm not going to leave YouTube. Can't really quite do that yet, but I have changed the focus. YouTube has problems in terms of marketing my show. I don't know what they are, but BitChute does not. So I would urge anyone who leaves even a snippet of this video would create a channel on BitChute to subscribe to my channel, which is www.bitchute.com slash SYLRanch, and hit the notification bell that you see there. Keep the conversation going in the comments and uh, share my videos on uh, social media and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. Whatever YouTube's algorithms are doing, they've been bad for Tales from SYL Ranch. YouTube's algorithm is, BitChute's rather, algorithm is doing it differently. I'm not seeing, I'm seeing more views and engagement. And BitChute does not care a pair of fetid dingo's kidneys what I upload. So please, Ditch YouTube. It is time. Come to BitChute, the free speech alternative to YouTube's socialist and communist algorithms. And if you can support BitChute financially, I certainly suggest that you do. There's a support page down there. Um, as they say on the page, they are a small team 
making a stand against internet censorship because we believe it is the right thing to do. And I agree. So, uh, welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, the BitChute channel, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. So that's all I've really got to say about that. So thank you for watching. I'd love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks, and I will do my best to respond to you. If you like what I'm doing, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and to tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. And as a self-branded BitChute channel, I recommend going to www.bitchute.com slash SYLRanch, creating an account, and subscribe to me on BitChute. Because remember, going forward, videos will be posted to BitChute first and will be marketed from BitChute URLs. I will then post to YouTube afterwards. And I would certainly appreciate your support, either via my subscribe star, my PayPal tip jar, or a place on my website where you can support me further. And there are links to all of those in my description box below. So that's all the time that we have today for this episode of the highly acclaimed, world-renowned Tales from SYL Ranch, a bit shoot channel. And it's where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.